All right, so here we have the horizontal asymptotes. Find the horizontal asymptotes of these functions. And we're going to use what we learned on the previous page about top heavy, bottom heavy, and balanced. Again, looking at this first one on A, we have 2x plus 1 over 4x squared plus 5. The degree on top, the highest power is a 1. The degree on bottom is a 2. That means it is a bottom heavy function. The higher power is on the bottom. Anytime our function is bottom heavy, we know that the bottom decrease or increases faster than the top does, which means the larger numbers on bottom, which means the number approaches zero. So y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. When we look at part b here, we have 2x squared plus 1 over 4x squared plus 5. The degree on the top is 2. The degree on the bottom is 2. This is when we have something that is balanced. So what do we do when we have it balanced? We take the leading term on top, which is 2x squared, over the leading term on bottom, which is 4x squared. We simplify this. 2x squared and 4x squared, the x squareds are going to simplify. The 2 is going to turn into a 1, and the 4 is going to turn into a 2, and I'm ending up with 1 half. That tells me what my horizontal asymptote is. If I went out to infinity or negative infinity, the end behavior of this graph, the y value would be approaching 1 half. When we go to the end here, and we look at this function for c, we have y equals 2x cubed plus 1 over 4x squared plus 5. The degree on the top is 3. The degree on the bottom is 2. That means this function is top heavy. Anytime a function is top heavy, there is no horizontal asymptote. If we ended up looking at the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity of this function, we'd be going to infinity or negative infinity. The way that we'd find that out is we would think about when we plug in positive numbers, large positive numbers, what would it be? Would it be positive or negative? If we plugged in large negative numbers, what would it be positive or negative? But for horizontal asymptotes, because that's the question, the answer's none. Let's look at some applications of this. It says a small business invests $25,000 in a new product. In addition, the product will cost 75 cents per unit to produce. Find the cost of the function and the average cost function. What is the limit of the average cost function as the number of units produces increases? So let's step back and see what they just told us. We need to find the cost function of this situation. It says they spent $25,000, so that's fixed costs, plus it's 75 cents per unit. 75 cents per unit is what's called your variable costs. The way that we would figure that out is we would add 0 0.75 for the 75 cents times x, where x is the number of units. So for instance, if I purchased zero units, it'd be 25,000 plus, well, it'd be zero, which is just $25,000. If I produced one unit, plug in a one, it would be $25,000 and 75 cents. All right, so this is our cost function, which is the first thing it asked us to find. Then it said find the average cost function. If you remember from the previous section, the average cost function is the cost function divided by x. Well, in this case, it would be 25,000 plus 0.75x all divided by x. Notice this is a rational function. The degree on the top is 1, and the degree on the bottom is 1. That means that this is a balanced function. So it says, what is the limit of the average function? What they're wondering is, what is the limit as x approaches infinity of this average function, average cost function, which is 25,000 plus 0.75x all over x. When I do that, because it's balanced, I know that it's going to be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is 0.75x all divided by x. The x's simplify, and I'd end up with 0 0.75. So what does that mean? Well, this is average cost, so this would be dollars per unit. What this is saying is the average cost of this is 75 cents per unit. That's what the limit means in this case. All right, let's look at another example of when we might care about asymptotes. This one is caring about a vertical asymptote. It says a manufacturing plant has determined that the cost C in dollars of removing P, that's a typo there, excuse that, that should just be P, of the smokestack pollutants of its main smokestack are modeled by C equals 80,000 P over 100 minus P, and this is accurate for 0 less than P less than 100. So that should be a P percent. P is a percent here. 
get rid of those dollar signs that you see on there. Okay. And so let's look at it. It says, what is the vertical asymptote of a function? Horizontal asymptotes, you'd be thinking top heavy, bottom heavy, balanced. But this is vertical asymptotes. Remember, vertical asymptotes factor and simplify, denominator equal to zero. Where's the function undefined? Vertical asymptotes, undefined. Horizontal asymptotes, you're thinking top heavy, bottom heavy, balanced. Okay, so where's the vertical asymptote of this? Well, if I look at this function, 80,000 p over 100 minus p, that is already simplified, nothing can happen. So what I care about is when is that denominator equal to zero? In other words, when is this function undefined? So this says 100 equals p when we solve this. So our vertical asymptote would be p equals 100. p equals 100. So let's think about what that means. It means we can approach that number but never actually reach that number. So this is the percentage of, of the pollutants removed. It says as we approach 100% of the pollutants being moved, that the cost approaches infinity, an infinite amount of dollars. It also says that we could never actually reach 100% of the pollutants removed. So as we approach 100% removal of pollutants, cost approaches, well, an infinite amount of money. We could never actually reach it. So, to summarize what we've seen here, when do we find vertical asymptotes? How do we find vertical asymptotes? Vertical asymptotes for rational functions. First thing you want to do is factor and simplify. And then after you factor and simplify, you're going to set the denominator equal to zero. And solve. And then you're going to separate your answers. And you write your answers as x equals a number, comma, x equals a number, however many it is. Okay? For horizontal asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, you want to look at the top heavy, bottom heavy, and balanced. Again, if it's top heavy, we know that the answer is none. If it's bottom heavy, we know that the answer is y equals zero. And if it's balanced, we know the answer is y equals a over b, where a over b is the ratio of the leading coefficients.